Super Incognito, along with Akuma So and Hakaiser the Final Brave. Yep. And this huh? is the Otaku Clubhouse Podcast. Now, I know you've all been wanting, and so we shall now supply you, if I feel like it, with this latest episode. So, if you feel like it is definitely <laughs> the truth. But hey, at least we got our first impressions out. That's pretty cool. I think that was cool. I like that video. Yeah, so uh, that's the, actually the first thing I want to talk about. Uh, we did put out our first impressions for a, a lot of the spring 2017 anime season. However, since then, we have watched some more first episodes of some stuff. So you, you guys want to briefly talk about our our second first impressions? Oh, our man. second first impressions. <laughs> I mean, it's up to you. I can't think of any of the anime that we watched that was like memorable. That, that was that like really memorable. Like... Uh, how about Sin Seven Deadly Sins? <laughs> you mean I how mean, we made I it through? We watched that by myself. We what? <laughs> we didn't even. We didn't even make it through. Like we made it to like what? two minutes in and then we were like yeah we can't watch this together yeah no especially not the like the censor and the censored version is ridiculous like i it's like a parody of itself <laughs> i don't understand this well they did sim. they actually did a uh, a similar level of uh censorship in the original second equation uh and then they also did something like that in the second season as well but then again, the second equation, and who really cares about that? You. Don't you really like that show? <laughs> that show nah, was really I... that show was really well animated. I can say that much. That's kind of all I can say about it. It. The funny thing is, uh, if you actually look at the credits for Second Equation, the original manga, it turns out that that guy, if I'm remembering right worked on the My Hime manga. So, there's... You learn something new every day. Yeah, you learn something new every day. But old, but going back to the anime topic, uh, I'm, I'm still uh, waiting for the second episode. I haven't had a chance to watch it yet of Recreators. And for anybody who hasn't seen it yet, I cannot give that show enough of like enough of a recommendation. I rewatched the first episode the other day, and I think it's just I'm I'm really looking forward to. Akuma is one episode. You can't recommend somebody watch something off the first episode. <laughs> come yeah, on, come on. No, I'm just I'm just saying I'm come not on. saying I think it's like oh, I'm gonna recommend it. You can have it's gonna be the greatest thing ever i'm pushing it for SummerSlam. i'm saying that i think that it has a pretty decent like first episode i'm saying check it out i don't know i, sure. I i'm just saying what it has was a that episode. other anime we watched and it was the one that had uh brown people in it brown women in oh it. that uh <laughs> that danmachi Dun spinoff yeah danmachi sword of otoria I can't say much about it. I, I I thought it was a boring episode. I nearly fell asleep during it. Dunmachi honestly has that feeling in all of it, like in general. There are just episodes on episodes where nothing really happens. And it's like that a little bit more so in the light novel. I have the first six volumes of it. It kind of sits like that for a while. It's one of those pseudo uh, pseudo video game alternate world type stories that Japan seems to have fallen in love with where everybody is essentially a video game character but they're not video game characters while at the same time they actually go like oh level up I'm going to level up yeah, I'm stronger that's now just, eh. I remember when that was very popular and now not so much <clears throat> yeah but now it's all about isekais yeah, I can't wait till this stops getting fucking popular. Which, yeah. by the way, a, a Recreators is basically a reverse isekai. Uh <laughs> character. It is. Oh no, it's it's one hundred percent a reverse ise a reverse isekai. But there's there's so many. Here here's the problem with isekais. Uh, I was reading one the other day, and it was pretty interesting. Had a decent premise. Uh, aside from the isekai part. 
it was uh, about some guy who, of course, it's about some guy. He's in Japan. He's like, oh, my life isn't so good. Then he dies, and then he's reborn in the isekai world. But what made this a little bit more interesting was the fact that the main character was reborn as a sword. And he was reborn as, like, just not like a regular sword. He was reborn as, like, the super powerful sword. And he was fucking, like, a, like a fucking final boss slaying weapon but all he could do was just be a sword he couldn't really do much else and it was like somebody eventually some kid ended up picking it up and it was uh the kid was a uh what do they call those things normally a beastkin and in that world of course it's one of those standard beastkin or oppressed etc things so the kid used it to kill all the hum to kill all these humans who were after her so I was like, oh, that's not so bad, until I th started thinking about it. Why did this need to be an isekai? There was an isekai where uh, somebody dies and is reborn as a spider in a fantasy RPG world. <laughs> so, uh... there's, a, there's also an isekai where somebody dies and is reborn as a slime. Yeah. Or an isekai where somebody dies and is reborn as a child who starts studying to be a doctor. Or another isekai where uh, somebody dies and is reborn into a world where there's absolutely no, like, standard language. So she has to start building the language. The problem is, why do these have to be isekai? Well, no. You know The last why. one makes sense. They, they're the isekai last, so the you can one... have a protagonist who has, like, a fucking meta-narrative on on the world that he's in instead of just giving a standard narrative and plus I just thought it was popular. just a clever way to have a self-insert character you well, can that's also have a self-insert character regardless of if they came from this world or from the other world Fuck it. but hang on to be fair to be fair the last one i mentioned it actually makes sense because uh she comes the character it's a female character she comes from our world and she is reborn into the body of this young girl, and she's like, "Oh, I just want to read. I just really like reading. I like books." And she's like, "Well, how come this family has no books? How come there's no books anywhere?" And apparently, it's like only the rich in the world are allowed to read. So it's like, "Huh, this actually wouldn't work without her having previous knowledge of uh, something like this." Well, get him back on. The original topic. Uh, so other stuff that I watched was Kinkabanchao, uh, Otome. Uh, I watched that of by course. myself, and uh, it's only eight minutes long. I'm not feeling too hot on it, even though anybody knows me knows I'm a fucking sucker for banchos, delinquents, Yankees, whatever the fuck. And this one, I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyone who has met Felix, you will recognize him by being a large black man with a yellow pompadour and a long school jacket squatting outside of a convenience store. Man, if I ever saw this man and he was wearing that shit, I would walk right past him. I don't know that. <laughs> but it's like this season's had some, uh, some pretty good things so far. Everything that I expected was going to be good seems to be good. Uh... Except for uh, Renai Boken, which it's, I, I watched the second episode of that, and <sighs> there's a such thing as waiting too long to turn something into an anime. I also watched the first episode of Arrow Manga Sensei, and I, I'm pretty sure <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that uh, Kumaso would love this anime, even though he's been burned in the past by the by the he's been burned in the past by the mangaka. I already know exactly why you think I would, and I'll just stick to well, finding. You loved Orimo, didn't you? <laughs> At first, I will find. I will find other outlets to my interest of that series. That's crazy. He... And you know what I mean. And let's just shut up, degenerate. Can we? Can we like briefly talk about these? I called it like the, the fucking second I saw that the title of. Oremo was, I can't believe my little sister is this cute. I'm like, yeah, this is an incest manga. The little sister is going to win. But somehow, these chumps and some other friends of ours convinced themselves that that was not going to be the case. That 
the first girl in a, a harem isn't going to win. And especially the, the little sister in a fucking incest harem. Come on now. Well, here, well, that's the thing. It was, it started off as it was so stupid. It was, it was actually very much out of left field because it started off where it was like these two characters, the brother and the sister, they didn't seem to, it didn't seem that there was any, romantic connection between them literally whatsoever <laughs> and i mean actually like you go back and you watch that there is 100 percent no romantic anything between them whatsoever but because Tsukasa fushimi is an absolute hack and doesn't know <laughs> how to write it so that a female a male and a female character actually have a relationship like an actual relationship he just couldn't fucking he couldn't fucking he couldn't do it and that's the thing i love lots of japanese mangas light novels and whatnot and i'm not the best writer in the world but for fuck's sake these these it's the fact that there's too much of it it's the fact that there's too much of it and i don't think that enough of these guys really know how to write these what a surprise it's almost as if they get away with it because their character designs are appealing to otaku well that is oh, true <laughs> but here's the thing but here's the thing there's plenty of stuff that is all that is actually very like interesting and can be well written and it still appeals to otaku like the fuck the fate series the fate series is the fate series hasn't been good since stay night come on now I argue that Stay Night is the worst of the Fate series. Oh, fucking to kill yourself! I'd argue. Oh, hell, I'd argue that Fate. I'd argue that the original Fate Stay Night is only slightly better than the Grand Order OVA. Go away. That's a contrarian opinion, you know. No, I'm serious. I think that the original Stay Night is absolutely the worst uh, animated form of Fate. Oh, I disregard think that, it. I think the Zero and the Unlimited Blade Works movie are really all you need. And to be honest, I'd argue that watching Unlimited Blade Works is only good in the movie because you get less Shiro. Shiro actually Fate holds Zero back the is the fucking caps. Resident Evil 6. Well, if we want to go on the high horse of opinions here, I think that uh, I think that Fate Stay Night should have been a, a hentai OVA instead of being an anime. Because it is based on a porn game. Moving on. <laughs> Man, that fucking... I, lo I love that almost minute-long sandbag. <laughs> That's not, it wasn't a minute long, unless you're living in hyper-time, which you might be. I'm living in fucking repeating time. You're living in hyper-time, and uh, Kaiser's <laughs> living in the past, yo. Well, you know, That's this cute. might all be true. If you, if you ever listen to our conversation, you hear that... Like we're always repeating shit, or talking about how things felt like it lasted forever, or talking about how things were better in the past. I'm glad we don't record ourselves outside of the podcast. <laughs> uh, anybody else got a, a different topic to bring up? I think we're done with the anime. Uh, yeah, I actually got something I I want to bring up just to talk about it a little bit. Um, I don't know how you guys feel about it. Uh, P.S. You can. We can start cutting right here if you don't want to talk about it. But um, I want to talk about the uh, more Ronello JBL thing. Oh, the bullying? <laughs> There's nothing that needs to be said. Dude is a grown man. If you can't stop somebody, you a grown man, and you can't stop somebody from bullying you, you're doing something incredibly wrong. That's, that's well, the opinion I hold as well. Well, I, well, I actually wholeheartedly disagree with it. Because of how uh, because of how WWE is supposedly structured, in the fact that Vince McMahon actually thinks it's really funny that uh, he actually thinks it's really funny how uh, Ranello was getting bullied or how JBL bullies people in general. Like it's well, see, it's saying. Either like, way, what is he know, doing? Like he's if not. Somebody could, if he if somebody comes up to you and bullies you in the locker room, you can either throw them hands. What are they gonna do? If I fire you? That's yes. the worst they can do. They ain't gonna press charges. They're not gonna anything. fire you. You know how many times well, Chris Jericho got in fights backstage with people who were picking on other talent. You, 
No, the real the real thing is, you know how many times Sin Cara's gotten in the fights backstage? Which Sin Cara? <laughs> the uh, Hunico, the current Sin Cara. He the current the current Sin Cara has gotten into I think three fights backstage. One with Simon Gotch, currently gone. Uh, one with Sheamus, where supposedly he laid him out with one hit, and uh, another with Chris Jericho. Oh, that makes sense. Man, so. it's no wonder they fucking... They are, they're burying Sin Cara, separating him and... Uh, what's the other guy? Uh, Callisto. Callisto. So, like, I mean, this would have been a perfect time to bring back the Lucha Dragons, but they're like, eh, we're going to trade Sin Cara to, to SmackDown, and we're going to trade Callisto to Raw. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, here's, the, here's one of the things I just want to say about the whole thing. It's like... After this started up, a lot of people have been coming out and talking on it. Like, uh, I actually just got done watching Jim Cornette's shoot interview on it, and uh, he follow he follows essentially the same opinion as you guys, but his is more along the lines of if JBL was bullying him, uh, Ronello should have just picked up a fucking uh, pipe and just busted him in the head. I agree. But a lot of the people who actually uh, work backstage with JBL have been saying that uh, have been saying that it's it's like it's so bad backstage with him that it's actually like you can't really get away with uh, he can get away with basically anything in terms of bullying because there was an instance with Josh Matthews I believe his name was I'm, I might be mixing up people here but uh Apparently, Johnny Mundo, anybody who remembers him, uh, JBL actually told him and his partner at the time to steal Josh Matthews' passport uh, when they were on the road as a rib. So when they were over in another country, they wanted uh, jo- they wanted to steal uh, Josh Matthews' passport, and that was a part of the uh, bullying. So it it gets to the point where it's things like that. So I, I guarantee you, he was stabbing ooh. somebody up in the head with a fucking. Yeah, break. somebody just fucking. I mean, um, actually, somebody ha- actually somebody has. Uh, he's been late. Uh, JBL's been laid out like twice because of it. Still does it. Well, just everybody fucking lay him out. Like he, he'll learn his le- It's fucking negative reinforcement, y'all. It's like a, a a rat. If you fucking shock it when it doesn't do the right thing, but you reward it when it gives it the cheese. Wait, uh, I'm fucking this up already. No, you no, you're 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 for the most part right. You're for the most part right on the uh, the analogy. I just don't. I I just don't go by the fact that, even, regardless. Regardless of how you feel about this whole, like, if he, if uh, Moro should have swung on him or whatever else, it's like, it's a fucking business environment. You don't sit around and bully and fucking bully people. Then why is he fired? Because it's because supposedly Vince and JBL are really well, close. The boss doesn't want to fire him, then I guess everybody should stop bitching or leave, uh, join another promotion. Well. From my understanding, it's about to get really bad because people are really serious about this fire JBL thing. If you go back and watch SmackDown from last week, they actually muted it, but there's plenty of videos floating around on YouTube and on Twitter where uh, the crowd is openly like chanting fire JBL. That's crazy. I wish they had crowd control for other fucking shit. Like, <laughs> like Roman Reigns? No. <laughs> Speaking of Roman... No. I'm not finished with you yet. Braun Strowman is basically the Incredible Hulk of the WWE universe. Braun Strowman is the hero that we've all wanted, but we do not deserve. For anyone who didn't see it, go back and watch that fucking piece from Raw, where uh, where Braun Strowman just beats the living shit out of Roman Reigns and then flips over a fucking ambulance. It's fucking great. It's one of the best backstage beatdown segments I think I've ever seen. It was alright. I think it's a little overrated, but... I just I just want to talk about the fact that it's like... So, me, me and Felix said this. How come Roman is just so much better at getting his ass beat than he is, like, 
selling himself as a super strong guy. Like, I don't know, confirmation bias, I guess. What? Like, because... What? Because everybody hates Roman already, so when he loses, everybody cheers. Akuma's and is happy. the one Sometimes. person who fucking loves Roman, other than... Nah, you know, it's just him being a contrarian. He doesn't You're love right, Roman. you're right, but he's still... Um, what? No! Tons of people say that Roman's actually a good wrestler. Like who? This nigga only got three moves. Like the wrestlers. Like ah, the wrestlers. He only has three moves. He had more moves in NXT, but now he just has uh, lock and load. Uh, uh, woo ah, The spear. Uh, the try by. Uh, uh, and he doesn't do anything else. He does a Samoan drop. Oh, okay. Every Samoan does a fucking Samoan drop. That's not a move. <laughs> That's a fucking extension of their body. <laughs> No, it's like uh, uh, Cornette's come out and said he's still he's actually a good wrestler. People who've worked with him have said he's a good wrestler. Hell, even Jericho says he's a good wrestler. And you know Cornette, you know if Jim Cornette comes out and says it, he's he's not fucking kidding because he doesn't care. He doesn't care what people think about him. He doesn't care what Vince thinks. Huh. So. I don't know. I think Roman's a good wrestler. I'd make a case to say that he is a decent worker and that he will never, should never, and can never be like the face of the company, unfortunately. I tell that to fucking Vince. Anyway. 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 You want to guys... talk about those uh, Xbox refunds? No. Nope. No. What? No. If you ask a question, then you, you you should be expected for any answer you get. Well, I was expecting something aside. I was expecting a yes, Akuma. Let's talk about the Xbox. Fucking okay. I think you no, don't you got a hard no. This question thing. <laughs> well, well, you see, the reason I the reason I ask questions, they're actually meant to be like answers that I'm always prepared for. But then, how about Social talking about? <laughs> Then how about talking about The Last Jedi? Uh, no. <laughs> no well, you just shut that. down all my <laughs> shit. Well, what the fuck? Jedi. Let me tell you something. First of all, Star Wars should have ended 30 years ago. <laughs> Wait, 30? <laughs> yes, yes, 30 years ago, nigga. Original trilogy. Is that right. long ago? Yes, it was that long ago. Is a pretty old dude, but it's. I'm not interested in the movie. You have fucking garbage ass Kylo Ren, who is the lamest villain of all time. This nigga has <laughs> <a> lightsaber. <laughs> nah, yo, Kylo Ren is our boy, yo. That's our he's boy. He's your he's boy. Not, he's not my. That's boy. our boy, Kylo, yo. Fucking throwing a Kylo. temper tantrum because <laughs> yeah. where's the rebels? <laughs> I like that though, yo. Fucking Kylo, yo. Kylo's real nigga, yo. Doesn't, Just stop. He doesn't hold back, yo. When he feeling Just angry, he let it all out. I want my teddies. <laughs> See, that's why he's you your got... boy, not ours. <laughs> and you got Ray, who is fucking born. Mary Ray Sue. As count and then you have Finn, who was also yeah. fucking born. Wasted potential, what? the character. Finn they probably not... rewrote him to fucking be gay with Poe, to have the first the first gay couple in Star Wars. Uh, that we'll would see. definitely not be true. Uh, it might be true. Who, who knows? It, are you going to say in all of canon, no? I mean, in the movies, on the main all screen. all the canon, you damn right I would say that, because the canon has been, like, no fucking home changed movies. to only include the movies. The movies. Well, the and, movies and the comics. And those the, cartoons and the new comics. The Disney fucking sanctioned lore. Uh... <laughs> no. Poe po and Finn are cool. I Man, disagree. let me tell you about the massive you, fucking... What is wrong with, what's wrong with Poe? Poe is fucking awesome. I wouldn't say he's, he's awesome. He's only made to be awesome. He's only made to do the cool... Woohoo! Like, here's the thing. Finn, Poe, and Ray were all just three-thirds of Luke Skywalker, the original Luke Skywalker, broken down. Ray is supposed to be on oh, the force sensitive, mysterious past, doesn't know anything. Finn is supposed to be the, you know, 
the the adventurer going out and who's uh, on a new path and then Poe is supposed to be the ace pilot. Luke Skywalker was all of those things at the same time and it made him an interesting character. These niggas are just thirds of characters except for Rey who is fucking uh, does everything as the plot demands. No explanation as of yet. All all this done to great. all this done to shit on the original trilogy. Because when I you think... think about it, Luke failed. Han and and Leia, their fucking happy relationship ended. They got divorced. Their son turned to the dark side. Luke's Luke's fucking nephew won't stop worshiping his evil ass father, even though. Darth Vader turned back to the good side at the end of his life, but his legacy's oh, Darth Vader is fucking he's the, the Hitler, the Hitler of the universe, or whatever. All the Jedi oh, are oh. dead. Luke is the last Jedi until he fucking trains Rey. It's, it's... this all happened in the this all ha a lot of this happened in the original novels. What novels? The novels that the aren't novel. canon anymore. Yes, and it happened in those, and nobody complained about it then. They didn't kill off all the Jedi then, and then uh, yeah, but Luke. yeah, but fucking Luke turned to the dark side then, was sitting in the fucking castle brooding all the damn it time. It wasn't a true. And turn. you're forgetting, and he, he, yes, it was a true turn. It wasn't a true. Because turn. the thing is, they've always said that one of the main problems with the Skywalkers is that they're extremely susceptible to turning to the dark side. There's only been two of them. That's fucking and fucking Anakin, Anakin well, Skywalker's no, because, dad was. What? No, a Sith. no, no. There's been there's tons of them because um, uh, Leia and uh, Han had like three, four kids in the novels. Well, they can't say it was always a problem with their with their bloodline when it's literally only been shown to been Anakin. Um, See, the thing is, is also the, the movies are fucking made. And also, they all cash ins now. You know? like, yeah, yeah. You could say, you could say, okay, all right. I mean, the original trilogy. You know, go back in time to see if it was like cash in, right? But they, it told a story from beginning to end. Everything was new and cool and fresh, and they had, uh, had heart and soul. But fucking the prequels, what did they have? They had Georgie Porgy. Fucking every damn thing. Well, the prequels had well, original fucking lore, original planets, original aliens. It might have been bad, but it did something new. And this well, new trilogy is just rehash. You guys, you guys are. I feel you guys are totally wrong, because the original trilogy, the original trilogy was not actually uh, all about having it be this incredible thing. It was actually trimmed down and changed so much because the uh, company... We know. We know. Uh, yeah, they didn't... It's let... You want the, true the soul... The first Star look, Wars you movie... You want true soul for Star Wars, you look at episodes 1, 2, and 3 because that's Lucas. <laughs> that, is, that is the most... No, that is the most, like, soul that Star Wars has because... Guess what? That's what Lucas wanted. That's what the original creator wanted. That, that is might everything. be what Lucas wanted, but what about the actors? What about, what about the fans? The producers. But that's the most soul that you can put into a film, is having the creator. Because, well, first I, of all, I never creator, said that it didn't have soul. The fact soul. that the creator had no fucking nobody to check no, on. He had nothing but yes men. And nobody but wanted, the wouldn't, soul, everybody but was afraid of the soul. Truth. I, I'm, I've not, never argued against the having soul. You say that it is the soul if it's only it, it's, one person. It's Lucas's when, fucking soul, but I never his, said it. It might be Lucas's vision. vision. The guys who the guys who trimmed the original trilogy didn't care about it. They just wanted to make it decent. They so wanted they to make a good movie. Like I, the the story of the original Star Wars movie, A New Hope. Everybody thought it was going to be a failure. They thought it was just going to be a massive waste that's of money. That's why it was and called and Star. That's why it was originally called Star Wars. It wasn't planned to be a large trilogy. It was just the original movie was called Star Wars, and in every subsequent airing of it, they added Star Wars episode, etc., A New Hope. What? A and New Hope was the all... first one? Yeah, no, I'm talking about the very... I'm talking about the, first the very first one was first called Star Wars Episode 4. It, no, it wasn't. If when you it watched, first aired, if it you, not, no, 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 no. Watch it, the scroll says Episode 4. 
A new no, hope. I, rem- I remember this is something that's been pointed out to me by other Star Wars fans. The too. title was just when Star it was Wars. Airing, but... It was just called Star Wars because yes, it was called Star Wars. But the scroll, thing. when it comes up at the beginning, is like dun, dun, dun. it said Episode Four: A New Hope. It was not expected to be more than just that movie. They didn't I know even, that. They I'm just I'm plans. just explaining they didn't even to have you. Plans for Darth Vader to be. They didn't even have plans for Darth Vader to be Luke's father. Yes, we know that, Koma. And the fact that, and honestly, I think people are forgetting how actually not great Luke was in the first movie. What do Luke you mean? was a whiny bitch in the first movie. That was the point. Luke was a whiny bitch in the first movie, and you're comparing Luke to what has happened to these characters in the first movie. Also, Finn has a lot of things going on. He does. He was. He was taken from it. He was taken from his family. He was trained to be a soldier in the fucking See, that's army. See, the one thing I wanted want to bring up before thing. this tangent is like how they falsely portrayed Finn as the main character, the protagonist in the trailers and the, the promotional material up until the movie came out, and you realize, oh, it's Ray, I guess, and then Finn's more like a side character, and he lost every fight he was in. That sucked. Well, that's fine. That, well, that's fine though. A character should. Would you? Would you have rather Finn just been able to kick everyone's ass? He is a stormtrooper. All right, he was trained as a trooper. And... Yeah, but the thing. Yeah, but he was never like. I don't even think in the point at any point he even was able to get a blaster in his hand. But the thing is, he was and never then in the Chinese version of the movie, the Chinese version of the movie oh, don't trailer. Compare, don't talk about the Chinese one. <laughs> That's crazy. That's not... Didn't they? Uh, didn't they take him out of the post? Yeah, movie? they, they did. <laughs> yes, they took him I... and Oscar Isaac both out of the fucking uh, thing, just completely. Because, well, I mean, let's like to be honest, it's it's black people don't sell movies in China, all right? What about Will Smith? Will Smith? That is the that is the one exception, the single exception. But. I'm I I'm I'm digressing. Let's talk I'm about saying... a different movie now. We've been spending a while on Star Wars. How about Thor? Oh, uh, what what's there really to say about it? Honestly, it, it had the Hulk like in it. It had the Hulk. It looks like it looks like it's gonna be pretty good. I mean, it looks like the it's the first Thor trailer where people aside from me are like, oh yeah, this looks pretty cool. Because everyone else, who, everyone else I know who sees the Thor trailers are always like, "Oh, it's fucking Thor." And well, I guess, I guess this is the requirement for him to have at least one movie. What? Uh, I know a I, lot of people are like. I thought Thor, the original Thor, was uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> they wasted a lot of time, especially when they were trying to get a fucking a Hawkeye cameo in. It's like the Avengers is next. We haven't made Hawkeye in anything. It's like, oh, just make him a security guard. Like, okay. Uh, and then Th- I thought Thor Dark World was really good. I did too. But no, but I, I don't know anybody who was like into it. I don't know anybody who were really into the Thor movies like that, aside from like fucking diehard comic, comic book fans and stuff. Because Chris Hemsworth is probably like the perfect Thor fit. Well, find somebody who's like... Here's the challenge for you. Find somebody who really liked Ant-Man. That's... <laughs> you hang on. Ant-Man. Uh, hang on. Yeah, you me mean too. Ant-Man before... Hang on, you mean Ant-Man before the movie or after the movie? I mean, that. Uh, uh, find anybody who fucking saw that movie. I didn't see that movie. I saw that movie. <laughs> you must have been the only one there. No, that movie did really well. They're making a number two. Allegedly it did well. I, I no, they did, it did so well that they're making a number two. I thought that movie was pretty good. I mean, I thought it was generic as all hell. Like, you can actually just cut point minute. for point. That's a contradiction. What? How can it be really good if it's generic as all hell? I said this before. You can have some, like, some generic cookies. Like, you got some Kroger cookies. <laughs> no, because you, know? you taste the chemicals in those, yo. Are you saying I you said, you was watching Ant-Man and you could just... Hmm... Potassium. <laughs> no, I. Well, the thing is, I was watching Ant Man and I was enjoying myself, and I was like, "Oh, this is pretty. This is pretty nice. I'm enjoying this." And then you find out, oh, it's just literally Iron Man one. 
Uh, did he kill like some Muslims? Om- like almost, well, almost exactly Iron Man 1. Almost exactly. So, I mean, here's the thing. And I think I said this before. Things don't need to be terribly original for me to think that they're going to be decent. Here we go again. I've said this before. How it's many just... times are we going to hear this one? I don't think things need to be terribly original to be good. I've said this before. Let's do the time warp again. I've... Well, if you're going to bring up a point like this, then I'm going to repeat myself. I feel it is a statement that bears repeating. You know, sometimes I wish I was on a ship. No, I don't, because I can't swim. <laughs> Nobody's going to get that fucking reference. Nobody is going to get that reference. That is an in-joke. That is the most in-in-joke. We haven't even used that joke before. Well, I guess that means they have to keep watching so they can get all of the in-jokes. Shut up. Woo. Jesus Christ, that is the worst hook I've ever heard. You know, keep watching so you can get all of our stupid in-jokes. I mean... Um, uh, I was just trying to, you know, help us make the podcast a little better, and you just want to shit all over me for it. All right, yeah, that's a, I see how it is. Shit all over the podcast. Oh, that's so disrespectful. Shit. Trying to make this work. Trying to make this happen. That's the type of person that likes the fucking new Star Wars movies. Everyone. Exactly. This is this yes, is an open-minded individual. This is the fucking menace, the Phantom Menace. <laughs> 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 Woo! Jesus Christ! Somebody do something! I I can't even ha- I can't I can't even deal with you two right now. So today is uh, Easter Sunday that we're recording this on. I'm exposing myself in case this go this podcast goes up late. But uh, <laughs> in case no nigga, it definitely <laughs> is. Hey, what happened to uh? Where's the last podcast? Oh, we don't talk about that. The Lost I think... Podcast? Exactly. I'm just going to release Lost it episode. like fucking five months down the road. <laughs> it's going to be episode... What was that? 17? 18? Is this 18? I don't know. I don't know anymore, man. <laughs> you do realize that that pod... You do realize that podcast has so much in it that is dated, right? Yeah, it has WrestleMania stuff in it. It was already oh. dated when we recorded it because we were talking about, well, I wonder what this is going to be, and then it literally happened. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just... It, oh man, I'm, pe- I'm peeking the mic. I'm sorry. You damn much, you sorry. <laughs> uh... You guys got anything else? No. Yeah. Uh-huh. If not, really? What do you got? Oh. Well, I just saw. Well, I can't say that. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah, let's talk about Samurai Jack. No, let's talk about my nigga, Super Seventeen. <laughs> Go away. I, I don't so know. Good. I guess. I guess I could talk about that actually I don't because see I, I watched the episode. The power Surprise levels life. don't make so any sense. So my androids are more anymore. powerful than we could ever imagine before. How can an android? First of all, how did they make an android that was stronger than Frieza? And then they made an android that can. Uh, how did Doctor Jerome put his own who... brain in an android body? I've said this before, and people keep saying, oh, "How did he do that?" Simple. He programmed the robot to do it when he when he died. Very Evidence. simple. It's an easy thing. He's a super genius. Oh, it's an easy thing. Okay, you do okay. it. Okay, fine. Everybody, wait. I, I I will be right back. Even though he hates to put his fucking mechanical parts on his body. I'm back. <laughs> All right, so. I got this set up. All right, in Sandic. about twenty minutes, in about twenty minutes, so yeah, Super this Saiyan gun will go off. Able to fight against Super Saiyan Blue Goku, which is like, oh, I don't get it. I don't understand what the kind of The animation of the scene was really uh, of it was gar- garbage. Was really... Just like Super it wasn't so. garbage, you idiot. It was fucking good. Mm, it, I, I watched that. Though. That was pretty bad. It wasn't bad. Thank you. Y'all, like, it was only. 
it was it was only slightly better than some of the other stuff. I mean, there was that one part where he just kept ah punch ah punch ah punch. Ah, it's Dragon punch. Ball Z. No, I mean he was just punching with one arm, pushing Goku upward. That was video game bait. It was video game bait. And then there was that stupid thing. Oh well, I have kids. Oh, let me see them. Oh, this is what your kids look like. I will not tell anybody or even slightly describe them because we haven't figured out how the characters are actually going to look and we want to be able to use them in a side project. Yeah. I'm glad you understood that. I I know that Dragon Ball Z is going to have its own Dragon Ball Z cinematic universe. All right? Uh, It already does. No, it's going to have another one. Because no. now the Shonen Jump wants to make, like, what, an entire... They are devoting an entire section to Dragon Ball now? Yes. Which, which, is that a good thing? Are we hoping for that? I don't that? know if that's permanent or if it's just a thing they did with a couple spinoffs, like the Yamcha one, which ended already. Uh need to sit down and watch that. I mean, yeah. read that. But, yeah... So, we also watched uh, Teen Titans The Judas Contract, which is the latest oh, yeah, animated did. DC movie. See, this is why y'all niggas want to end shit prematurely, y'all. I'm like, uh, This is what happens when you don't come prepared, y'all. Always have a plan to kill everybody you meet. Wait, no, that's not. What? Right. Hang on. <laughs> uh, that's, that's, I'm I just do not quoting. associate with this man. Just remember, everybody, you heard that this is a recording. That's not even... That's a quote from... Uh... Final episode. Oh. Final episode. <laughs> Akuma and Hawkeye are the final brave are never heard from again. But yeah, let's talk about that movie. No. First and foremost, uh, Terror is a tot. I mean, a thot. I mean, a tot thot. <laughs> t- no, ter- no, Terror is a tot. Terror is a tater tot. A tater tot. <laughs> That's the fucking name of the podcast right there. The whole... <laughs> but the uh, the whole plot of the movie revolves around this uh, 15-year-old girl wanting this 79-year-old man's dick and willing to portray all of her friends for the power of a gray bone. To be fair, though, it is my nigga Slade. <sighs> Your nigga Slade. Uh, that is our boy Slade. Why do you keep saying our oh boy? Why do you keep saying time? Slade, you know? Fucking, this is a Teen Titans drone, you know? I know this man as Deathstroke, you know? Give I knew him as Slade. I didn't fuck. I couldn't fucking afford comic books when I was a kid. Poor. What? Comic what books when you, poor? when you were a kid were like a nickel, you fucking 80 exactly. year old man. Exactly, you explain how it was. Uh, but, yeah. how do you, yes, well... C- comic man. comic books now are like fucking five dollars. Oh, well, Marvel comic books are like four ninety nine. Like, okay, that. that's like that's like what six pages. Yeah, like who the fuck? If you don't have a subscription and you're just buying them like casually, I, oh, maybe that's why people aren't buying them. Not only that, the stories are weird, and the characters they don't recognize. It's also expensive. But I digress. Getting back to Teen Titans. What did you guys think of the movie? It was alright. I had had my waifu Starfire in it. This nigga Hawkeyes are the final brave, yo. If she thoughtin', I'm stinking. What? (laughs) Oh, wait. (laughs) I... I don't know where I was going with that. Now that I think about it, you know, two thirds of the girls in this movie were fucking total <laughs> whores, yo. <laughs> <laughs> Only Raven was pure. And she's the Antichrist, so. <laughs> you, you flustered me so bad, I, have no, I, I can't respond with anything. <laughs> I know I don't like how the new Raven design is. You know, call me a fucking Mark or whatever. I just I like uh, Teen Titans design Raven. Also Teen Titans go Raven, but if you say that some niggas look at you funny. I'm looking at you <laughs> funny right now, my nigga. <laughs> I think this, this right. I think this Raven is the best Raven. Nah. Cause I've seen cause I've seen comic book Raven and she looks dumb. 
well, yeah, comic, like, especially old comic book Raven, and then, you know, there's the bottom of the bottom tier, which is, like, Injustice Raven. <laughs> What's wrong with Injustice Raven? Just because she had Batman's chin and Superman's biceps doesn't mean anything. And, uh, fucking Gorilla Grodd's voice. <laughs> it's, they got, they got Tara Strong to play her, but they fucking directed her to be, like, sound like, sound like this. Like, oh. Well, she had to be dark and brooding. You know, it's it's fucking DC. Everything has to be dark and brooding. No, 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 that's not true. You uh, know, that saying that saying has become that saying is a fucking meme. But it feels like the that saying's a fucking meme because plenty of DC isn't dark and brooding. But there is so much like Zack Snyderisms now in DC that whenever I see like a fucking slight grayscale or something or a little bit of tint on the fucking camera focus and whatnot, it just they feel I feel dark and gritted. Does that dark mean and... that Common Rider Amazons is part of the the Snyderverse? If I and get Darrow. to see if I get to see fucking if I get to see fucking uh uh God, what's his name? Who the main character? Uh, of Garo. What's his name again? Kyoya? No. Um, Kyoga. Koga. If I get to see Koga kill Superman, I'd be fine with that. I don't think you could. It's magic. Yeah, but the way Superman's vulnerability to it, it's not a weakness, it's vulnerability. He can be affected by magic. If you make a, a magical fireball... Right, like you conjure a fireball using magic, that won't hurt Superman. But if it's a fireball that turns him into a fucking a cat, that will affect him. So it's weird <laughs> like that. Wait, hang on. A fireball that turns him into a cat? Yes. He'll be turned into a cat because he doesn't have a, a resistance to magic. Why would a fireball turn someone into a cat? That was my point. It's, it's DC! No, that's not a... A lightning bolt turns a ten-year-old into a diesel fucking monkey, yo. Like, <laughs> Wait, what? Shazam. Not an actual Shazam. monkey. <laughs> I remember yeah. when Shazam was called Captain Marvel, and then they had to back off from that. <laughs> because they didn't Marvel. want them associated with a bad character. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That was a bad character. Captain Marvel was fucking garbage. <laughs> <laughs> But we recently, well, as I brought up, we recently finished uh, the first season of Kamen Rider Amazons, which incidentally, this past week, the second season just started. So, what did you guys think of that series? I thought it was very good, better than all of this fucking Neo Heisei slock that's been coming Kill out. Kill yourself. There's no Neo Heisei. Stop using that terminology. Killing, killing the fans. Nah, I'm good. It's fucking what? You're killing the Common Rider fan base in the West. Good. How is that good? Because means... all they want to watch is Neil Heisei garbage. Gaim was good. Gaim was trash. Drive was good. Drive was trash. Drive was trash. The last good Common Rider series was Forza. Forza was good. Wizard had good For anybody movies. who doesn't know. For anybody who doesn't know, Hawkeyes are the final brave, and... Uh... Our buddy Super Incognito over here live by the logic of if I can't, if I don't want, if I can't have it, nobody can, etc. I never lived by that logic. All the, my logic is more like if I don't like it, then I'll kill everybody who does like it. They're not in the wrong for liking it. This They're just the second, in the wrong. This for is living. the second. This is the second admission of murder on this re on this recording. Please put this up just so that people have a fucking understanding that you are in fact crazy. Why don't I just cut out the parts where I say something about murder and just have leave you guys reacting to it? Then y'all will be the crazy ones. See the diff see the problem with that is I've been making noises in the background, so it'd be pretty obvious <laughs> that something got. <laughs> You see, the problem with that is, hmm. I've already called 911. Anyway, Hawkeyes are just fucking hates all modern Kamen Rider for some reason. And by modern, he means anything made after 1999 for some arbitrary reason. 
99. But I like Cougar. Cougar came out in uh, 2000. Cougar is Neo Heisei. No, it's not. It is. Because you, you consider that Heisei started actually with Kamen Rider Black. And then Cougar came nearly 10 years later. That makes it a, well, a you new know Heisei. That I mean everything decade and up. Which is dumb because there's been more Neo Heisei at this point than Heisei. Well, you know. The series, the, the franchise went on. <laughs> and you just you yep. hate shit for arbitrary reasons. Oh, I don't like the no, super I don't. design. I don't like this. I don't like that. Rarely have. See, this is why I I have the authority in Tokusatsu in this uh, Otaku Clubhouse. I we proved this last year. I have watched more Tokusatsu series than the two of them combined. So, good on me. I never uh, said. I never once said that I was. I, I'm not saying that you did. I'm just saying that I watched more than both of y'all combined. Well, no matter how much you watch, it doesn't change the objective. And it means fact. that I'm an objective quality, expert in all all things tokusatsu. It's it's funny how uh, Kamen Rider Amazon is Amazon's... more similar to well Amazon. You know what I mean. Amazon's is more similar to uh, Heisei before decade. No, it's not. And everybody likes that. It is. It's more similar to things like Agito, Kuga, Blade. It's actually not. You want to know why? Is because it's actually more similar to uh, uh, Showa era Kamen Rider. No, no, it's not. Yeah, it is because there's no forms. There's no fucking multiple forms. There's no. Uh, Guns. Well, I mean, the main character, the 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 writers themselves don't use guns. They don't use. The tone swords. is much more similar to something like Agito than it the tone is. Tone is much a... more similar to something like Tokyo Ghoul. Let's not bring that up. Here's your reply. <laughs> and what do you mean? Which is hilarious when you think about the fact that. uh Yuki is going to be playing uh, what's the what's the name of her probably her last acting role? Oh, Toka. Toka. Speaking of that. No, let's not talk about that. Continue with your common writer talk. But speaking of Toka, I mean, uh, you guys, I, I don't know if y'all dropped Tokyo Ghoul or enough. I know I did because I couldn't read. The fucking art was unbearable. <laughs> but uh, I recently checked uh, the latest chapter, just on a whim. And uh, looks like uh, our boy uh, Kaneki, or how do you pronounce his name? Kaneki. Kaneki. Uh, Toka, they're about to fuck, yo. Finally. Yeah. It took it took fucking how long? <laughs> Five years? Yeah. Well, are you talking about that one? Because Tokyo Ghoul is one of those mangas that it's like... Tokyo Ghoul is one of those mangas where it's like, I look at it and I'm like... Oh, that's a, it's a really popular manga. I'll never read it. Ever. I read it. I made the, mis the grievous mistake of reading it. I read all through the first series and started reading the second one. I'm just like, I can't follow the art, dude. Like, I can't. Like, I don't understand what's going on. Like, there's just a fucking a, a fucking black swatch of color and ink. And I'm just like, what the, what's happening? And then one of the characters said, wow, so fast. Like, yeah, fucking no shit. <laughs> <laughs> when they just draw speed, when they just draw speed lines and no characters. Hi, hi. <laughs> don't know what's going on. Plus, there was a time skip and some other weird shit. And I'm sure if I kept reading, I would have understood it. Uh, and one day I might uh, I might go back, or maybe they'll make a, uh, another season of the anime. But who knows? Who knows? While we're talk while we're talking about awesome mangas, let me recommend everybody the awesome manga Yakushoku Despertia. What is that? You remember the one with the uh, hero, and he has the hole in his hand, and he has the hoodie, and in order to get stronger, he has to do that thing to his partners. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. I'd stop Anybody reading that, who but wants I, I actually want to keep reading it because it's so edgy. It makes me laugh. Like it's going to get it's going to get an anime. It's gonna ah, it's gonna be anime of the season, yo! I can't wait. I can't wait to see people fucking freaking out. It's gonna out. be comedy of the season. Yeah, it will. There has never been a time where I can where I've honestly felt like I could just sit back and watch the anime community just 
implode from that from a fucking release of a thing except for those upcoming sword art online live action shows that's going to be great Why to must watch you torture yourself by constantly constantly bringing up shit that you don't like i know it's like it's it's weird it's almost like when i became a youtuber all of a sudden i just started watching things that would make me upset and reacting to them and then posting it online or constantly making reviews and whatnot of bad things and things that I consider terrible and just wanted to talk about it over and over again in order to just draw views. See, I don't know who you're talking about specifically here because I... <laughs> I'm, I'm not talking about any, I am not talking about any Sounds kind of like that fucking bitch-ass nigga mother's base. <laughs> No, because he's not getting paid for it. <laughs> Christ! Uh, that's two for two. We're going to keep going every week. Uh, from no, now on. Stop! Oh, wait. Why not? Well, because we don't need... Let's stop talking about this. <laughs> well, the, that's, I think that's enough content for this week. You're just gonna cut. You're just gonna fucking turn off the content faucet. <laughs> yeah, you gotta keep it in. Don't don't need leaks around here. Uh, so, yeah, who wants to close it off? Any uh, closing words? And don't just say fuck off this time. I've got some closing words. Right, go ahead. Closing words. <laughs> don't laugh at that. That was terrible. <laughs> you're incur. You're only encouraging me. Huh. <sighs>